What's going on, everybody? My name is C4. Welcome back to the chill. Today, we're here for episode 22 of our Madden 24 Arizona Cardinals franchise mode, where we're coming off a staple victory for us in this progression of our Cardinals team. Taking over the Arizona Cardinals originally in Madden 24 because they were the lowest rated team in the entirety of the game. There was not much going positive, but through one of the greatest drafts we have ever seen we have been able to kind of turn things around quickly we also had, oh, you had to just can't ignore the elephant in the room we fired Jonathan Gannon who is very uncapable as a head coach we brought in Ben Johnson the former offensive coordinator from the Detroit Lions and we kind of saw everything kind of come together week 11 the 49ers are the best team not named the Philadelphia Eagles in the entirety of the conference they are the top dog in terms of competition in our own division in the NFC West and we went in and we hung with them. Things got dicey. First half was not good. I thought for sure I was getting ready. Probably chucked this controller a couple times. Things were not going our way. Felt like every bounce went the way of the Niners. But we were able to persevere. 37-31 to go to 8-3 and three and sit atop of the division. Now there was some off the field stuff going on with our owner here in Arizona. Michael Bidwell. A lot of news starting to leak and... Basically, kind of just left it with there's some uncertainty about him and his ownership of this team going forward. And there's a legitimate claim that now that Dan Snyder's no longer in the league and the commanders have sold the different owners, is Bidwell the worst owner in the NFL? And there could be added pressure. I'm not saying that something is going to happen, but what I am saying is expect the unexpected because you never know how these back room, you know, all it takes is like Jerry Jones and a couple guys in a niche. The, I, I think this is what happened with Dan Snyder for the better. Picks like Ursay and, and Jerry, all these guys, It just as soon as they want you out, they will find a way to force you out. So that is something we do need to pay attention to. But the on the field for the Arizona Cardinals has been awesome. Today we're going to be doing a doubleheader. We're going to go week 12, week 13, get into week 14, and play that Dallas Cowboy Magic because I'm sure I just want to end this one on uh, and just be furious and angry because that's going to be a very, very difficult matchup. But a great test because if we can beat the Niners week 11, I think we can beat the, the Dallas Cowboys in week 14. So take a look at where we're at here. Week 12. We got a couple boosts here. Up first, we have a trench boost. And we're taking on the 2-9 Falcons. Falcons are an annoying team. Needs to be said. I, I'm not looking at them as a 2-9. I'm looking at them as definitely one of the handful of very annoying teams that you have to play in Madden 24. Desmond Ritter, B. John Robinson, Kyle Pitts. They got a goddamn basketball team on the outside. And we are not a short secondary. We are also not a super tall secondary. It's not like we're Seattle, where we have a couple 6'2", 6'3", corners on the outside. Uh, so the amount of yards rushing our team has against the Falcons determines how much XP we get. Okay, so try to prioritize running the football on the offensive side of the ball, which, hey, with how Roosevelt Bonds ran last week against the 49ers... He went off. I mean, you know what? We need to like show a little respect to this result again. Can't just gloss over like, oh yeah, we beat the Niners last. This was an absolute battle. Brock Purdy was not making a single mistake. Every completion he needed to get, he would. Every audible that he needed to make to get into the best play, he would. But push came to shove. We were getting sacks. We were finding a way to get home. And, oh yeah, I don't know. We just were able to hand the ball off to maybe, like we have the best, this is the best rookie draft class I've ever had in Madden at least for a series like maybe I've got a crazier one from like a sim where I'm not really playing and controlling the team week in week out but as far as like a main franchise the fact that like we got Roosevelt Bonds what this was week you know, round four three or four missed some games due to the running back strike but the fact that he just he's been able to come back into the lineup and has been like a dog absolute dog 185 yards three touchdowns did have a fumble but for most part, for a rookie, outstanding. And I think that now we have a goal this week to run the football. Uh, we're going to be able to do so. It would be nice to get the passing offense a little crisper than it was against the Niners. And I do think we're going to have plenty of opportunity to throw the football here against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, but look, the sacks have been there. The sacks have become both our linebackers getting involved. And uh, it is worth saying, man, our linebackers right now are on a record-shattering pace statistically this season. I think maybe the bye week between now and the Dallas game will be a cool game to kind of recap where our team is at statistically. But I just want to show you at the top of the total tackle linebacker defense leaderboard, we have Zayn Collins at first place, who has 100 tackles, 11 TFL, sack and a half. Second place is Owen Papa with 94 tackles. I don't think I've ever had, I feel like maybe one year. I, can't, I couldn't tell you what year that was. It might be going all the way back to like when we did the Toronto Huskies. 
that I had the number one and number two total tackler in the NFL. But Popo, his stats are even more eye-popping. Yes, he doesn't, you know, he'll hit 100 probably this week, but 14 TFLs, seven sacks at 6 feet 225. We're just using him like a heat-seeking missile behind that line of scrimmage. The best blitzing off-ball linebacker in the league in his second year. What a monster he's been. We use that as a perfect segue to what is very important on top of the victory here in this Week 12 matchup is hitting this breakout linebacker. I thought it was going to be for Owen Popo, but they're giving it to Zayvon Collins. Opportunity for him to jump from star dev up to a superstar dev. We need to hold the Falcons less 200 total yards. We tough or get Zayvon Collins some production, a 2-plus, interceptions, force rebels, TFLs, or sacks. So I suppose, I guess, push comes to shove. If we have the opportunity to use either one of the linebackers and we want to send one of our rogue blitzes, uh, we'll make sure that that is Zayvon Collins here today. So how do we want to attack him? Well, surprise, surprise. They like the dink and dunk, so we are going to defend the short pass, make things hard on Desmond Ritter. Uh, and you say that like, okay, yeah, we don't want Desmond Ritter to beat us. Sure, just hand the ball out to B. John Robinson. That's going to be a lot easier. Uh, looking at to attack them, again, they give up. Pretty easy throws. So, yeah, we will throw it medium. I can't even remember the last time we set that. Um, and based off of your guys' comments, I left you with, like, the big question here. Is how should we handle the focus players? Because for most of year one of this rebuild and into year two, it was just like, you know, it was what it was, but we played the mini games trying to get Owen Popo a dev trade, right? And we finally got him to start dev. You could even make the argument he should be superstar, but I think when this season is done with the pace that he's at statistically, he will be getting a dev trade at the end of the year. The question is, Kyler Murray. Should we be trying to chase a dev trade for Kyler Murray? Because he has won Offensive Player of the Week like seven times without getting a dev trade scenario. And that is like one of the most common ways to trigger a dev trade scenario in season is to get Player of the Week. And there was like weeks where we got him Offensive Player of the Week three weeks in a row. It wasn't even just like, oh, he needs to be consistent enough. Like he just was not getting it. So I said, should we be able to hop into some of these drills, try to chase those gold medals, which are tough for the quarterbacks, Way easier for the linebackers that we're trying to get with Papa. But should I be trying to get these with Kyler Murray? And it seemed like people were in agreement. So, like, he deserves at least opportunities to get off that star dev and be a superstar, which is where he probably should be right now in this franchise mode. So I'm going to chase him every single week. I'm going to do the drill. Obviously, I'll only show it if we get a goal, because if we don't get a goal, there's no chance at going up dev. Uh, so it could be few and far between as well, because I'm not the I'm not S tier at the quarterback drills, but we'll try our best. But we do have different drills here. That could be pretty interesting. What's the pass skeleton? Like we, hmm. I feel like this option attack one could be interesting. I also feel like just this base pass skeleton, 10,000 points. I assume they're just running routes. I want to go, let's go, I'm going to try the option attack. I've never done this one. It seems, especially with Kyler Murray too. You just got to read one defender. Someone should be wide open. I have more than enough speed. I think we can get gold in this one. Of course, I've never done this drill. So let's, let's bring it here live, because if it's bad, I'm going to be able to use this as self-scout later, especially when I'm editing the video and be like, you got to be a lot better. So we need to we need to read. Okay. Oh, so far, so good. I like the fact that this is not... Pa the, the worst part about any of the passing drills is... The fact that I can't control... This is already off to a, a fantastic start. You definitely loving the speed here of Calvin Austin. Is that I can't control the, the routes. Sometimes you get absolute garbage routes, and these drills are all about the multiplier. Stacking the multiplier up. And what do we got? We got to get 15,000 or 30,000. You got to stack the multiplier up, and when I can't control the routes, all it takes is one brutal route. For me to just hate my life and be like, well, that was fun. I literally made 17 terrific passes, made the right read, but then they gave me like a verts on the one yard line that my team had no answer for, and it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, we're at 10,000. We got that multiplier going. It's not that hard. This is pretty much just that running back draw. And the fact that we can kind of cheese this a little bit with Calvin Austin. Do we got to get 30? 35. So it's not as much as the running back drill. The running back drill is 50,000. Probably should have pitched that one. I forget. Is it left bumper to pitch?
Let's go, man. We need, we need like two more tutties. Might not get it. No! No! 500 points! Damn it. That's doable, though. That's absolutely doable. If I threw a little bit more taunting in there, did like the fancy celebration dive into the end zone, I think we could, we could start racking off some golds there. So, uh, defensively, through practice here, healthy. Offensively, we'd love to continue to see clean bills of health. It felt like, man, like our injuries are, are we, we have injuries happen in game. Like, we're, it seems like we're getting probably two to three injuries in game a week, it feels like. But we're not getting a lot of those injuries in practice, which has been a dub. Because I remember, like, that was one of my biggest pet peeves last year in Madden 23 franchise mode. It was just like, it almost felt like you were giving me at least one, if not two, injuries through practice every single week. Like, that our team's able to stay healthy, and we're able to get ready full strength, as full strength as we could be, to take on the 2-9 and Falcons, who are not particularly good. They have the worst offense in the NFL, second worst defense in the NFL. Keep that in mind in case we start getting shit pumped. Oh, there we go. Panic throw by Ritter. Honestly, had a wide open B. John Robinson. But Desmond Ritter sucks. So that's probably a big reason why the Falcons are where they're at. They need to, they need to find a new QB there. Run the football. The more we run the football, the more XP our offensive linemen get. So that is absolutely... That's absolutely something that I'm down to do. If I can get three, four hundred yards rushing today, something ridiculous. If I can play this like a naval academy or a military school in college, I'm going to. Hate it, but I need, you know. If they're going to give me that, they're going to sell it. They, if they know that we want to run the ball to get XP and they're selling out to stop the run, I'll take that every day of the week. Keep feet. Oh, no, no. It's just cramps, man. He's got to take a shit. He's fine. That's a, a real big shit, but a shit nonetheless. All right, Calvin Austin time. Well, that's not too serious. Could also get some of these rushing yards with Kyler. Hate that. Hated it. Ah, oh, they shut that shit down. ACL sprain, no! That's a couple weeks. I mean, it's not a tear. Fuck, man, just jinxed ourselves. Saying, oh, we don't really get many injuries. Idiot. What an idiot I am. I right, got him a third and two. Let's play this smart. No! Fuck, who is that? Zia Hodgins, huh? Another 6'4 guy. All right, a couple of runs didn't really get us much here, so we're on third and eight. You need to get Kyler Murray into a rhythm, just as the one bomb is his only completion. But, you know, devastating loss right now. And, and our offense is a little rattled with Roosevelt's Bonds injury kind of hanging over everyone's head. We got Michael Carter as RB2 ahead of Corey Clement. Just OC was not happy with the running back strike, huh? The main culprits of it. Unreal. I think we, I actually want to go back to that play. Let's get a shot. I, I, it was there. It was there the first time. But he ran into a DB that kind of slowed his route up. I'm glad it was still there. Ooh! He's a beast! He is a... Oh, get the edge. Get the... Oh, that's a hell of a pursuit there by 43. I thought that was a tad. 
Oh, here we go. Classic, right? Classic. In the red zone. And where is Marcus House? Suck and win on the sideline. Luckily, we got Alberto. Reliable. He used to be reliable for my Eagles in real life. I think he's going to be starting tight end for Eagles next couple games. Uh, this is what we worked on in practice. Read option. We're reading Lorenzo Carter. Read that one well. Gotta remember, man. One of the worst defenses in the NFL. We should be dropping 30 minimum. Well, get on. There we go. It is Cam Thomas. He's stepping up here due to some injuries along the defensive line. 12. Trust that our guys can win. It still might be better to play zone just because the jump balls. If they were if they were utilizing the weapons, how they should be used. Big pressure there, obviously. Kyle Pitts, not a block. You don't want to put Kyle Pitts on Ojolari. That is a Kyle Shanahan type move. Third and six. Let's get off the field here, fellas. Let's watch Kyle Pitts. He's going to the running back. Ah, that's the same fucking play I used on them. Bijan's back. Where's my, my, how come my guy's not back? But Bijan comes back. God damn, man. That felt automatic. There we go. That is what you get from Kyler Murray. Off play ability hitting house. All right, house unfortunately comes out of the game. So we need to rely on Alberto. Oh my God, Alberto! Oh, he is. As tight end two as you could ask for a tight end two. Until Marcus House has any stamina over 58 and can be out there for like a reasonable, accept amount of place for an X-Factor tight end, man. I'm happy we got Alberto. Look at that, man. Tough catch. Middle of the field. Spins out of the big tackle on Wingard. Breaks the tackle. So is a stiff arm on Jesse Bates. It's like a 97 X-Factor. Gets in the end zone. That is huge before halftime because we get the ball it's coming out of the second half. We actually got the ball here before. Quick three and out. Quick three and out, huh? I'm going to press 80 of my guys. All right, that's a mulligan. It's a mulligan right there. All right, we fucked that one up. We fucked that one up. Get in there. Get in there! Let's go! Calvin Austin! You don't already have in your franchise, but I feel free to take inspiration. Move this guy to running back. Trade for him. Move him to running back. He is special. Just don't let him get smashed on the field. He'll probably fumble it. Look at that, man. He's 170 pounds. And you got this guy here, Richie Grant, who's also not the biggest defender. Just shrugs him off. I got 35 on the 33. With where we're at the lead here, you know, just get adding to it. Versus, you know, avoiding a, a super risky throw. Or we just get a little bit more rushing. David on your mouth. No way. There's no way. I just got chased down behind by a D tackle. Fourth and two. I feel like if we went for it before, you got to go for it now. Start the fourth quarter. This is too much blind faith in my offense here. Yeah, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> he's playing like he's 220 pounds. <laughs> Got him. Got him again. Even more. I mean, just pilot it on Calvin Austin. Makes you, you know what? Maybe it hurts uh, Roosevelt Bond's case for offensive rookie of the year. But it feels like almost any running back right now is able to run behind this Cardinals juggernaut offensive line. Let's go with a little toss play. Too much speed out of Calvin Austin. What a performance. I think like, we feel pretty good now. Even if Roosevelt Bond is not a great diagnosis and we get a lengthy injury, Calvin Austin, man, proven. Like, he got us. He got us. Damn. 
I might, you might have to give them credit right there. That was the prettiest touchdown score in today's game. Too bad it's garbage. Well, the first time a running back from the running back strike gets a carry, and he's running angry as shit. Let's go, James Conner. Oh my god <laughs> the missed tackles by the well, i i need these missed i need this level of tackling for the remainder of the rebuilding ready to love this goddamn season please let everyone tackle as bad as the falcons like i, I would love actually they count those right like broken tackles i'd be surprised if we're not at 10 at this point seeing why they're the worst defense in the league that's what we needed right there fellas that is Go in with the game plan. Kyler Murray's still late, but we ran the football well. Only bummer is we unlikely, yeah, un we did not hit the dev trade scenario for Zayvon Collins. But, I mean, rushing yards equal XP, and we ended up 257. So, I don't know what that's going to give me. 2,500 XP would be pretty cool. I don't know if it's capped. I don't know if there's tiers, if you will, of how much XP we can earn. And, yeah, you know, Desiritter did... Well, two of those tutties were in garbage time, all right? I think we did a pretty good job defensively. Even the score doesn't completely reflect it. Kyler Murray, 300 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, which is good because these interceptions have been creeping up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, Roosevelt Bonds looked exceptional, and then he got hurt, and then Calvin Austin came in and said, I got you. Look at that. One, two, three, four, five broken tackles from the running backs. Oh, they're not going to show it. I think House would have had it. But House back last week, what, 60 yards, worse output. Balance is back tenfold. Nine catches, 185 yards, and a touchdown. Alberto getting involved. Hollywood Brown caught a deep ball. You know, would have been nice to maybe get Rondell Moore a couple balls here and there, but still pretty good. Owen Papo, six tackles, two TFLs. We get a sack from Boogie Basham, a sack from Cameron Thomas. But as you can see, unfortunately, Zayvon Collins did lead the team in eight tackles, but got nothing that counts towards uh, his breakout, which, you know, hey, a little bit of a bummer. But overall, very happy with this result going into our bye week. So unfortunately, we need to uh, let's get the camera out here. We got, we got, we got to, you know, got to at least talk to that guy and find out why we're a little bit disappointing. But here is the good one: the trench boost hit. Now, is it worth it? Obviously, we'll always kind of chase extra XP when we can get it. But selling out as much as we did to run the football was it worth it for the XP boost? We got 10k XP. Holy shit! Hey, yeah, that'll do. That's a couple nice upgrades across the line, for sure. For the bye week, usually, like in regular rebuilds and stuff, I'll always go, like, the XP because, you know, you, you always, stamina's not even on. But because we do have stamina, let's go team bonding retreat. Absolutely earned it. Don't need to, don't need to grind this week. Let's heal up. Let's come back and ready to kick the shit out of the Cowboys. I guess while we are here during our bye week, we should look at some contracts. One, Boogie Basham, especially if he wants to take that. I mean, he is probably going to be worth a lot more than that in the open market. He's at five, six sacks. We got Nixon here as honestly should be a developmental corner with that dev trait. So we'll give him a little bit more in terms of years, three years, get him locked in, which is great. We don't have a whole lot of money left. And now we're at that spot of like guys that I would like to pay if I had a lot of money. Like I definitely would keep Kaiser White here for two years. I definitely would keep Will Hernandez here for another year. But uh, that is getting pretty tight with the salary cap. So I think we'll have to wait and see on those guys. So I said, during the bye, we will quickly look at our team stats. We currently have the number one offense in the NFL. Kyler Murray, third in yards, top 10 in tutties, 3,400 yards, 24 touchdowns to 12 picks. Again, interceptions a little high, but we are on all Madden. So uh, the fact that we have that big of a gap between our touchdowns and picks is pretty good. I do say so myself. Uh, Roosevelt Bonds, man, injury, not bad at all. I thought that was going to be multi-week. No, you know what? Honestly, you probably saw what Calvin Austin did. He's like, I gotta, I can't miss time. If I miss time, I'm gonna lose my spot. So it's it's good knowing we got that one-two punch here between him and Austin. They both definitely can contribute. Uh, but big numbers there for Bonds. Big number there for Austin. Obviously, Rondell Moore for his time at running back. Kyler Murray. You know, we're doing a good job of still having a good rushing attack without having to run Kyler Murray like we did last year, which is keeping his availability. I mean, he hasn't missed any time yet. Knock on wood. And this Dallas matchup. Marcus House has been ridiculous. 67 catches, 1,200 yards, 8 touchdowns, average over 100 a game. Rondell definitely has a shot at hitting 1,000 as well by the end of the season. Uh, Hollywood Brown's nice. Claypool has made some plays. Albert O's made some plays. Got some good role players. Got some good star players. Defensively, Zayvon Collins, 108 tackles, 11 TFLs. Sack and a half. Owen Papo, 100 tackles on the dot, 16 TFLs. Seven sacks. Rest of the pass rush, we got 10.5 on 17 TFLs for BJ Ojolari. 
our X Factor pass rush we'd like to see, and like you know, Boogie Basham giving him a two-year, very reasonable deal for a guy that's going to be double-digit TFLs, probably seven, eight sacks, if not more, come seasons end. So there's definitely a lot of value there uh, in retaining Boogie Basham, uh, and also Cam Thomas, man, a little bit of a role player, barely makes play. He has three tackles, four sacks, five. He just makes plays. If he shows up with a stat sheet, he's making plays. We got five picks for both Marco Wilson and Kenny Hodges. Do you feel good about three from Delpit, two from Garrett Williams? It's been a little bit of a quiet spell from our picks, though. Uh, rookie kicker, 92%. has only made missed one. Lalong of 58. Punter here got six gongs on 30 punts. Not bad. You know, we're almost getting to a one in, one in three ratio. And I guess how that stacks up against the rest of the NFL. Well, let's see here. Right now, most yards are Geno Smith. Crazy. The best touchdown interception ratio is Patrick Mahomes. Jalen Hurts, I mean, geez, Jalen Hurts there as well. 25 touchdowns, only two picks. Running the ball, CMC, 1,200 yards. Pretty, you know, no one really standing out there. The Premier backs are playing like Premier backs. Uh, Marcus House currently even, now, now after the box, everyone's kind of played catch up a little bit because we're, you know, we didn't play a week. Still leading receiver in the NFL, rookie tight end. So I am absolutely here for that. That is awesome. Um, I mean, Rondell's up there too. I mean, for a guy that played running back for, what, three, four weeks? If he was strolling, you know, solely a wide receiver, you could probably add at least another 200 on that. So, like, 950. You know, he's just outside the top five based off of that. Defensively, ooh, Devin White. Devin White, you know, that's, you know, you got to keep pace. Sad a game there. Our top two, one and two for total tackles. Kind of fell out the map. Uh, you got Miles Garrett there with 13 and a half. And, obviously, we don't have enough tackles to see Ojolari up there. But he is top five pass rush in terms of production this year. Uh, which is badass. Same goes for interceptions. We have number one and number two with five picks for both Marco Wilson and Kenny Hodges. So, I mean, this defense, you know, we're getting a lot of big plays on both offense and defense. We need it to show up this week against Dallas. So we got the 7-5 Dallas Cowboys who have a top 10 offense. Defense overall not great, but they do have the number seven rushing defense. So we're going to have to try our best here. And we're going to take away the dink and dunk for Dak Prescott. Maybe even the blitz counter. Yeah, get the ball quickly. Not let Micah Parsons take this one over. Let's see if we can do anything with Kyler Murray. And ideally, just at minimum, everyone's healthy. Just to show that injuries do happen, Rutledge, our, our late round steal, hidden dev safety, who's a beast on special teams, picked up an injury, so he's going to miss this game. Offensively, though, clean bill of health. And we're not going to talk about whether or not I just got a bronze medal or not for Kyler Murray in that drill. We're just going to carry on. We're not even going to acknowledge it. Hey, here we go. It's first play of the game. Ojolari starts it off right. Gets in Dak Prescott. I mean, you got to rattle him. You rattle him, we're going to have a day for four or five interceptions. Field here. Oh, what? Got to get in front of him. Hodges. Come on, rookie. Oh, I'm sure this is smart. Yeah, we got Kaiser White on CD Lamb. And he drops it. Let's go. Dak threw a duck. CD couldn't compensate. We get off the field. I guess, what is this play? Second and 10. Coach likes this one. Like I wasn't the biggest fan, but third manageable. Hey, hard, hard running. Shell across here, Hollywood Brown. Looks good to me. Just going to watch Micah Parsons over there. Oh, great scheme. Great scheme. Come on, let's go. We're going to be the hammer or the nail. We're going to be the hammer or the nail, baby. Well, you decide. ACL looks good. There we go. Oh, I split this. I hate that. I split it. Ojalari should have two. Especially now that we're trying to hunt down the sack title this season. Those half sacks could come back to bite us in the ass. But he is absolutely, I don't know, is that Tyler Smith? Someone is getting owned right now at right tackle. All right, third and 16, got to at worst. Like, they're out of field goal range or maybe just inside. 
Aubrey, but we just can't give a first down here. This needs to be good stop. 30. I'm probably going to attempt the long field goal. Which, oh, the sim doesn't give us a roll. 51 yarder. My bad. Can't do it. One guy. The one guy out of the entire NFL. Maybe Miles Garrett. That I'm not going to be able to outrun. Oh, what the f... Please press. Give me one guy that's getting pressed right now. Oops. Rondale? Okay. It was late. Fuck that. We're li Had our look there, but that was late. Come on, fellas. Off the field. Off the field. We got Dak scrambling. Luckily, he didn't get the hat trick of sacks for Ojolari. Defense bails out our offense. Run right at Micah Parsons. Go. Oh, there's digs. Use Micah Parsons' aggressiveness against him. They can force a turnover or two. They will punish you with a shitty ball. So, let's play it smart. Save passes like that. Wide open house. Let's go mesh again. Oh, this is... I mean, we have the play cool down. Like, we can't run a play for so many plays, but this is probably my favorite play to get house involved. It's just... It's almost unstoppable. What are they doing? Classic Dak clock management? Just put a timeout. Go for the... Oh, of course. Of course, classic Dak management. Throws always a pick. Somehow there's one second left on the clock for them to attempt a field goal. And they get some points, but luckily we get the ball coming out of the second half. God damn it, Mike is good. I think, I think we would have had Bonds there at the backfield, or Michael Carter, whoever it was. Third 11, I don't know, field goal range, probably not. He's a little bit, we go, Michael Carter on the backfield, holds on to it, gives us a very interesting decision. I really think we should go for it, but it isn't, you know, the cheese might happen for, I mean, there's, there's a lot of arguments here. I would go for it, but the fact that coach doesn't want to, we'll trust coach. Kickers only missed one kick all year. Fim 50 yards. Nails it. Oh, man. They watched what worked from the Falcons game, man. This goddamn wide receiver screen. Gotta figure that out. Get another Keith Taylor with the PBU. Let's go, Keith. Three. We'll go Papo. Try to watch the middle of the field here. Oh, come on. Who is, I don't even know who that is. Tyrod Smith, though, one of the most injury-prone players in the NFL, surprisingly, has an injury. Let's keep bringing pressure. Dallas, not a good red zone offense. Obviously, feels condensed, so it makes Dak Prescott have to think a little bit, and that's... Oh, jump! Fucking jump, man! He said, why jump? I go for two to make it a three-point game. Oh, my God, man. No, we hate super linebackers, but if we had a little super linebacker, then I think Pop would jump that. All right, three. I mean, good call that we kicked it, I guess. Or maybe not. Maybe we should have just went for it, been aggressive, and got the touchdown. Quarter. Third and five. Micah Parsons has been a problem. Really affecting our passing offense. Can't really let much develop. But if you're not going to jam house, you got to treat him like a wide receiver, man. You can't give him a free release like that. We're going to find him every time. Nice little run there. But DJ Humphrey starting left tackle. Picks up an injury. I bet you it's a sternum. Coach wants to run a play action shot here. 
Didn't love it. Didn't love that call, man. I don't think play action, there's any room for that person because he's not biting on him. 44, close to field goal range. Kicker got a leg on him. Put a bonds at the backfield. Gives us a sh shot at a long field goal here. Don't show punt. Sprain wrist. So Humphreys, get your ass back in there. What is the field goal on this one? 58 with what? Eight wind? Man, I like our guy. Eight win, though. Fuck it, let's go. That's a perfect kick. If it goes in, and it could go in, this is the best shot that we have, and it is good from the rookie. What a boot by TJ Klein. Oh. There we go. What a game. BJ Ojolari. X Factor enabled. We're very worried of Michael Parsons. They're the exact same with Ojolari coming off the edge right now. Look at that. Untouched. Oh my God. Give me the ball back. Right in Dak's face, too. I love that. He's a dog. Yeah, any points here, we're feeling pretty good. No turnovers. I will I will play like a bitch and just kick a three. Give us a two-score lead at this point in the game. He gone. The fact that we are going to find a way, you know, is our team good or not? Are we legit or not? The Niners and Cowboys, I don't know if we play Philly. I don't know if we're running through the NFC East or not. We just played Dallas because where we finished last year. I think we probably, we might have to run into Philly at some point. But if you could beat Dallas and you could beat the Niners and you're in the NFC bracket, NFC side of things... You're legit as shit. You want to go for two? We'll go to our money play here. Honestly, I actually might look for Carter at the backfield. I think they're going to think we're going house. Ooh, all right, good tackle. And on the back of Roosevelt Bonds again, we go 2-0 and in the episode. 26-14 over arguably the toughest team that you play in the NFC. That's maybe more so sim base, but... I mean, Dak threw it 42 times, and our defense bend didn't broke time and time again. Uh, offensively, Kyler Murray, clean game. Didn't turn the ball over. Didn't put the ball in harm's way. Was able to facilitate, if you will, uh, and just hand the ball off. Roosevelt Bounds with a hot hand. This Dallas Cowboy defense did not want to stop the run. They just wanted to get sacks, and uh, we kind of took advantage of their aggressiveness. 160 yards, two touchdowns for Roosevelt Bonds. 76 yards and a tutty for Marcus House, which is nice him getting his. But on the defensive side, man, game ball absolutely going to B.J. Ojolari. Four tackles, four TFLs, three and a half sacks on the day. Kinlaw with the sack, half sack there for Zayvon Collins. Game ball, Ojolari for sure. He's likely going to get a player of the week performance as well as we remain the best team in the NFC. We start the episode first place. We finish the episode first place, 10-3, and three, keeping that gap between us and the San Francisco 49ers. And we are the one seed in the NFC as it stands. Taking a look at just some of the some of the housekeeping, if you will, a weekly award. Got to be Ojo Larry. Wow. Wow. Really? Shout out Roosevelt Bonds for getting it. I, I think we probably should have had a clean sweep there, honestly. Uh, and off of that, we do have an upgrade point for Roosevelt Bonds. We'll bring him up to an 80 overall. Just marveling in the rookie. The fact that we got Roosevelt Bonds... The fact that we got Marcus House in the same class. Uh, ridiculous, man. Absolutely ridiculous. Outstanding player. Great name. And it doesn't get much easier, man. That next two games there. Miami's going to be tough. A lot of speed. Seattle's going to be tough week 16. Okay. I mean, we are, we are starting to see the end of the tunnel here a little bit. But an outstanding job from our roster today. Especially against Dallas. Let's go, man. We got the, we got the winning formula. This is... The best team in the NFC. I hope you guys are enjoying the ride because it's just beginning. I don't know how far. This team could win a Super Bowl this year. Absolutely could win a Super Bowl. That is our goal. Will we be able to achieve our goal, though? Uh, that is for another episode. So thank you guys very much for watching. As always, first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out. Love ya. Have a good one.